We're going to go ahead and float some color underneath the feet, underneath the body, right on top of the feet where it meets the body. So I'm going to use an orange or a pumpkin color, either one of those, whatever you did on the nose we want to do here. I'm going to try and make this a little bit wider and I'm just going to do right along the top here. Try to do that other way so you can see. And I've got to turn it here for a second. <laughs> I'll turn it back around in just a moment so you can see where I've done it. Just right in there. Okay. If you also wanted, you could do the brown, the lighter brown there, but I like that color of the orange on the feet. I think that looks really good. And then we're going to use our liner and we're going to make our nails black. We're just going to come in here and put black right on top of our nails. Because we really want those to stand out. So, And I'm not adding any water to that. Now we're going to go ahead and do the rest of the lines, but we're going to do those in the darker brown and you can add a little bit of water to that this time. And that will just make those feet look more like feet. And I'm just going to come in on each of these little lines just on the sides and pull those in. If you get those little grooves, that's great. If you don't quite get on them, that's all right. There's no right or wrong on that. It's okay. So, my little feet. Makes them look more like little bird feet and all those little lines that come up them. And then those ones out from the part there. I did get a little bit of paint up on this bird body. If it's still wet, hopefully I can just clean that off with a wet brush. If not, I might have to put a little bit of brown, the base color back on there. Cover that up a little bit, but I, you also can cover a lot of mistakes up with the greenery that we're going to do as well. For some reason, this tail just does not want to be on this e or eagle <laughs> owl today. So I'm going to cut enough for his tail off and get that going. And we wait to put him on to the um, owl until after we have him secured onto whatever we're securing him to because we don't know how that tail is going to sit. So that's the reason that we wait to add that tail. And that's just um, something to know that that's a reason I don't add him on earlier. If you're putting him on a flat surface and you made it on a flat surface, then you then you would know where it needed to go. So, Okay, so roll them up, get rid of all the lines, and I'm just going to kind of start squishing them out here. I want them a little bit long, kind of a tear shape, I guess, still, and I am just going to put him right on his little butt here, his little bird butt. And I'm just going to secure him with that, that part there. And I am going to watch this guy, and when it starts to get hardened, I'm going to move him up. Another thing you could do is if you had an item that you could set under it like that, that would be really good as well, which I might let him do because I wanted that to kind of tip up. But while he's drying, I'm going to go ahead and glue his eyes on. And his eyes are going to be glued on with E6000. And I am going to um, 
E6000 is something that we carry. I'm going to tape them on because I don't want them to slide on his face. And you have to kind of keep them on for a while. And it's best if you keep them held in place for a few minutes. Make sure the eyes are going the same direction. You don't want to have to change those. I think I'm going to switch. This one's taller than this one, and my gourd seems to be higher over there. Yes, that's better. And I'm going to hold them in place for just a little bit here. On these little guys, I just ran some lines down them on the clay, and I didn't do that on this one. I wanted them different from the wings because the wings are so much different, but you can put whatever you want in them. So we're going to do the uh, color that we did our other wings. You could also do it the color of the body. Don't forget to clean it off with the alcohol first and do that. So, let's see if I can find my fresh pot of all the paint here. So, I'm just going to do base color it, base coat it, excuse me. The color we did the wings. And I actually would have liked it not quite so high up. I think it's a little bit high up. I would have liked it a little bit lower. I think I've got it sticking out a little bit too much personally. But don't forget to do this underneath part as well so it doesn't show and this is such a good coating color I'm probably just going to do one coat of paint on it while our base color is dry we're gonna come back and float color around the tail again with the burnt umber up against the color up against the tail all the way around to make him stick out again and anything that you think shows if you don't want to do that very part under the tail don't worry about that but wherever it shows and then we'll get that base color dry and we're just going to do him like we did the body I'm going to use the burnt umber again and we're going to just do it like I said exactly like we did the body. We're just going to come in here, I got them a little bit too wet and put this on the tail. And if you thought that's all it needed, you didn't want to do the other part, the lighter part, that's totally up to you. But get the sides, and I would do a little bit underneath here on the tail as well. And it should be dry enough that we can go ahead and just go into our next color. And again, we're using that lighter tannish beige color. If I can get it to come out here. And you may decide that you wanted the color of the body. Either way, whatever you decide. That's what I always try to tell you. And I always try to leave my corrections and everything kind of in so that you can see I'm always changing things up and moving things when they don't work. And just because it seems like things don't work for us, you don't know how many times we've redone it and done it. So that's why I like to leave things in it like that. So you decide what you like and do that. And in fact, I think I'm going to try just a layer of medium brown over this because it's kind of not just it just not matching anything else right now there I like that better and I know the tails and the wings are different but 
This will blend it in with a little bit of everything. And sometimes if you're plain, you can always go back and add another color back into it. That needed that. Alright, now I'm happy with that. We've got his eyes glued on. So what I would do at this time is take him outside and varnish him before we glue any of that greenery on that we already talked about. And I would use satin or matte. Be careful with the humidity. You don't want it to um, turn, your, turn your gourd white. Sometimes it can do that if there's too much humidity. So you want to make sure that it's drier when you're using especially the satin and sometimes the matte. Um, so just put at least probably three nice coats on that and then go ahead and hot glue your greenery on it. So to do the greenery, I just have kind of been snitching from a wreath. You also can get the garlands, and Michaels usually puts them on sale during Christmas time for $1.99, I believe they go on sale for regularly for $5.99. And I just trim these off, and once it's all varnished and completely done, I just glue these here and there with a hot glue gun. And then I also have some little tiny pine cones that I like to put in that as well. So that's all my greenery is, and they cover up a multitude of things like the back and everything as well. Wasn't that a fun project? Another thing I wanted to tell you about is simply put an eye hook on top and make it into a Christmas ornament. We have a lot of people that love owls right now. So that's a really just another cool idea to do with it. Of course, if you ever have any questions, please email me at artatmiriamjoy.com. And for any of the clay tools or quick wood that we used in the video, as well as the wax tools, come on over to miriamjoy.com and purchase yours there. Thank you for all your support. God bless. studio today we're working with the gemstone points and we're adding them to the rim of our gourd to make a real unique and original gourd these are probably around an inch we do have them on our website while they're available at mariamjoy.com and I'm going to show you how to attach them first thing I kind of did when I was playing with putting them on is I laid them down onto the board and I kind of looked and marked about every third stone and with my pencil and you can do that or you can actually use the flexi as well and I kind of measured those out after I had marked them and they were uh, ended up being about an inch and a half spacing from each other and you can measure them with the flexi if that is easier for you to do and then we're just going to drill those holes about a fourth inch back from the rim and 
and do that all the way around. Then I'm going to use sinew to string my points. And I'm just going to cut the end of my points off. And I'm going to string them. And I'm stringing them right onto the thread and just pulling them off so I don't have to do them one by one. I'm just pulling them over. If you find that there's not a one point in there that you don't like, then to just take that one out. That's not a big deal. And we're going to thread these. This hole seems to be just a little bit smaller. On until I have enough to go all the way around my rim. And then we'll start sewing those on. I strung some of my points on and then I've also kind of clipped them onto my gourd. We're going to kind of do a section at a time. I'm going to use black sinew to sew it onto the rim just because that's the color I have the inside of my gourd. The natural is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. So the first thing I'm going to do is this tail that I started with. I am just going to tie onto that and we're going to keep it going from there. You also can tie right directly into that first hole. Either one of those is just fine. So, we've got that. I'm going to go ahead and loop this one time in this first hole. So down. So I have a loop, and I hope you can see that well enough. And so now that I've got that anchored, I'm going to take this first clip out. And remember we marked it through every third one, so you want to come through that thread. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down, but I'm going to move this thread behind my needle. You can see that. And we'll pull that through. And what that does is it puts that thread on the back part of your gourd there. And I'm going to keep doing the same thing. I'm going to come about every third one. We're going to put that thread back behind that needle so that is in the back. And then I'm going to go ahead and finish sewing that all the way around. I've gone around to where I finished stringing my beads and sometimes you'll have Instead of three, only two will fit, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. There is no right or wrong. And you may have a better way of sewing the rim on. This is just kind of how I see it going. So don't feel that you have to do that exactly. So now that I've caught back up here, and you could even do these a couple at a time instead if you think it would be easier just to string these to the next hole and then put that through and then come on inside through that. You can do that as well if you find that that is easier and it may be easier than trying to hold all of those guys on and work around the clamps and everything. Hardest for me part is always trying to keep the needle on. And that may just be easier instead of fighting the clips. You'll have two needles going, but that's okay. And if you also, if you found that you would rather work with the wax linen, you can do that as well, especially when you're sewing it on. That's fine too. But just try to keep the holes when you're drilling it consistent as size so these go on nice and even as you can get them. 
So I'm just going to go ahead and finish putting these on and then we'll talk about tying it together and hiding our strings. When you're working with your top, also make sure that you have enough of uh, the beads to go all the way around that you don't have a bigger hole than you have beads. Now on this last little part that I have here, we want to make sure that we have enough beads but we don't want it so tight. If I add three, it actually pushes in and pushes down and it's better to have less than it is too much. And see the two, we can kind of pull that nice and tight. So we're actually going to finish that guy there with two. So I'm going to go ahead and go back through my original hole, catching that guy. Coming up through there one last time. We've got all of these ends now, and we're going to tie them all together. And what I'm going to do, just so I don't end up with one big knot, is I'm going to tie the string bead by itself first. And we'll use that surgeon's knot. And then we'll tie our rim string and I'm going to make sure that we've kind of caught that all together. I'm going to bring that up through the top. So my last one, I'm going to take that down and back up through that top. And like I said, you may find you have a better way of doing this, and that's fine. This is just to get you thinking about adding some new exciting rims to your gourds and how much that can really add to them. Again, we're going to double that one direction and then turn around and do it the other direction. And then I am simply going to cut my tails. You also could put a dot of super glue there if you wanted to make sure those were really secure. Leave your tails long enough that you can put your needle on them and string them a little bit. I'm going to take one of my tails one direction in my beads and cut them off. So this one, I'm going to take this direction and I'm just going to run it up a few beads as far as I can. Get about the third one, it's going to come out over here. And that's okay. And I'm going to trim that there. I'm going to pull my needle a little bit tighter. I went back and I grabbed just a little mat. These are the little mats that you line your drawer with. They're really great for pulling needles. So I pull that out and we're going to trim that really, really close with our tiny scissors so we hide that thread. And then we're going to do the same thing going the other direction. In my one tail, I have that a little bit short. I should have made my very beginning one a little bit longer. So hopefully we can kind of catch him here, but that's something to remember. And I always learn new things, even as I'm doing the videos. So I always leave things in because if I'm learning, you're learning. And I'm not perfect, I just learn how to work with it. So the best things are mistakes that we've learned from. And I'm going to go that other direction. Get around that knot if you can. Get him kind of out of the way. I'm going to go a couple of things there. And another thing you can do is you can thread that needle while you've already got it strung and in the beads. That's a good way to catch that little tail right there. Let's see if we can catch him. And if you can get them through more 
beads in that, that's great. If you can't because we're at such an angle, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. And sometimes your little pliers work really good too. So we've got him coming. And the whole idea is to get those knots covered up as much as possible. And I know all this is extra, so I'm not even going to worry about pulling all that through. I'm just going to grab that and pull that off. And you want to keep that as tight as you possibly can. If that was a little loose, you could even glue like a little concho or something over that as well. But doesn't that make a fantastic rim? I really like the way these look. And I think it just adds so much more to your gourds. So it is up to you what type of stone you want to put on that. But the points really add to it. You could put the chunky on. All kinds of fun stuff. So come on over to our website at mariamjoy.com. Check out all the fun embellishments we've got going on there. And don't forget to check out our YouTube page at Mary and Joy gourd creation. You can also find, sign up there for our newsletter that we send out. We update you on all the sales and everything that we're doing. Thank you. God bless.